Okay. Uh, hello, all. Welcome to DevCon QS. And I'm here to present you on the topic of container security automation with Ansible. Okay. So, a little about me is my name is Sumit Jaswal. I'm currently I'm working as senior software engineer in Ansible content team, where currently I'm largely focusing on Ansible security content. And previous to this, I was actually contributing towards a networking project and Ansible core as well. So as you can see, my GitHub and IRC handle is JUSTJIS, and my email ID is sjaswal at redhat.com. So at any point of time, if you feel any, if you have any query, you want to reach out to me, either you can uh, ping me over IRC or you can directly mail me on this particular mail ID. Okay, so today's uh, agenda is very uh, straightforward with respect to container security. So the first one is understanding continuous security concept. Second one is can using Ansible automation platform and uh, continuing on understanding terminology for identifying vulnerabilities, automated vulnerability assessment for Docker container using Ansible. And this, then the schedule scan using Ansible automation platform for Docker security. And then uh, a working demo for two of the tools that we can utilize in our container security environment. Okay, uh, so the first one is understanding continuous security concepts. And in this, the key approach is to emerge out of DevOps and the idea of immutable infrastructure. It also means that every time there is a need uh, for a runtime change, either the either in application code or a configuration, the containers are built and deployed again, and the existing ones are torn down. And this allows for predictability, resilience, and simplifies deployment of choice uh, at runtime. And because of this, there is no surprise that many operation teams are moving towards uh, uh, this particular idea. And with this, the uh, questions of when these containers should be tested for security and compliance are also answered. And by embracing the entire process of continuous security and scanning and monitoring, you can automate a variety of workloads and workflows, basically. So what are the best practices uh, that we need to take care and we need to keep in mind for the continuous security? Is The first one is uh, we should ensure that there are no vulnerability in the container build. And we are rescanning the images deployed on production systems. And also, a third one, uh, the most important one for my prospects, uh, can be rebuild, rebuilding of images instead of patching the particular images. And how Ansible and uh, and how in this particular scenario, Ansible and Ansible automation platform can help. So, as you know, Ansible uh, security operation is not coming up with a security solution, or it's not a security product. It basically comes up with the integration and with the integration of the vendors that are there in the security space, we come up with the integration and then try to resolve the use case uh, using Ansible standpoints. So the first one uh, is automating vulnerability scanners that are currently there in the market, which is uh, StackRox, uh, Echo Security, Anchor. And this enables the programmatic scanning as well. And this helps in automating runtime protection tools to ensure images uh, don't change during the runtime. So uh, the continuous security scanning requires us to manage it in a software uh, like Ansible Automation Platform. While most of the discussed tool can be used for scanning and maintaining a benchmark for security, we should think about the entire process of the incident response and threat detection as a workflow. So Ansible Security Initiative can actually help in uh, either progression, detection analysis, containment, eradication, and recovery, and also can help in post-incident activity. So before moving forward, basically, I want to go over the basic terminology which is currently used for identifying vulnerabilities. So these are the common terminologies that I've included in this presentation and are part of uh, this list. The first one is CVE, which is actually a list of record and its uh, full form is common vulnerability and exposure. And this uh, list of record is that where each contains an identification number, a description, and at least one public reference for publicly known cybersecurity and vulnerability, basically. So the second one is open vulnerability and assessment language, which is OVAL. And it's an international information security community standard to promote open and publicly available security contents. 
Next comes the common weakness enumeration, which is CWE. So CWE is a category system for software weakness and vulnerability. It is basically sustained by a community project with the goals of understanding flaws in software and creating automated tools that can be used to identify, fix, and prevent those fix, uh, prevent those flaws, basically. So the last one is National Vulnerability Database. Uh, this data enables automation of vulnerability management, secure, security measure, measurements, and compliance. And it's also a US government vulnerability management database, which is available for public and can be used in uh, XML format. So there are many different ways of evalu uh, for evaluating security of containers, right? So containers, uh, as you know, uh, in this uh, current scenario, containers are everywhere. And uh, below are the basic tools that can be used to help uh, in achieving continuous security and as well as harden the, uh, your container environment or the Kubernetes environment. So the first one that I've included in this presentation is the Docker Bench, which is actually a shell script, uh, and it is used to perform checks based on uh, your uh, Center for Information Security database, which is CIS. The second one is Clear, which is actually a static uh, based, uh, a static analysis based tool, and it is also helped to perform vulnerability analysis based on the CVE database. So the third. Uh, Part of the tools is StackRox, Aquasec, or Anchor. So these are more elaborated tools, which actually exposes uh, plenty of tools within. And those all in together come uh, come together to actually automate a workflow uh, in container security world. So it's basically a platform to security, uh, uh, platform to platform security evaluation, and helps make runtime policy decisions. Another one is Aquasec Privy. And it's basically a simple and comprehensive vulnerability scanner for containers. So the last one is OS Query, which is an OS instrumentation framework for OS analytics to do the HIDS type of uh, activities. Okay, so the first one uh, in the list was Docker Bench for security, which I told you guys that it's a shell script to perform multiple checks against the Docker container environment. It's so the Docker Bench for security is basically a script that checks uh, for dozens of common best practices around deploying containers in productions. And these sets are all uh, automated and are inspired by CIS Docker Benchmark. Uh, so where and uh, what all uh, criteria uh, Docker Bench checks for, it can actually check for your host configuration, it can check for your Docker daemon configuration and files, it can check for your Docker container images, uh, it helps in checking the Docker runtimes, also helps in checking the Docker security operations, and uh, last but not the least, Docker Swarm configuration as well. So, uh, so I'll be showing you the working demo, how you can use Docker Bench in your environment using Ansible. So uh, uh, I'll be going over the working demo at the last of this presentations before, uh, after discussing all the tools. So stay tuned. So the second one is Clare. So Clare allows us to perform static vulnerability analysis against containers by checking with the existing vulnerability uh, database, which is in this case a CVE. Uh, so it also allows to perform vulnerability checks against our Docker container images using the Clare database. Uh, uh, if you want to have more details, uh, uh, it can be found over your GitHub repo of Clare, which is uh, github.com for OS Clare. And Clare is also an open source uh, project, which is a uh, very uh, good uh, uh, from container security world. And if you want, if you want to have, uh, uh, like, if you want to contribute to the project, we can directly do that. So it also ingests vulnerability meta metadata from a configured set of sources. It helps clients to use Clare API to index their container images and can match it against those vulnerabilities. And the uh, last point is uh, Clare scanner which actually can trigger a simple scan against a container based on certain events to check for existing vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. So I've included a playbook uh, and a run result from Clare. And why I've done that because uh, Clare uh, installation and uh, its setup is a bit complex. So I didn't want it to uh, come, uh, like run the entire setup and run that uh, particular check uh, during the work. 
the working demo because it would have taken too much of time. So here it is. Uh, you can see the playbook where I'm trying to scan the containers over localhost, and I'm not trying to gather any facts. The variables I have used is uh, first one input is uh, image to scan, which is in which in this case I am currently using Debian SID. And I have created a, a clear server, which is uh, at this particular IP and port. So the first task is downloading and setting up the clear, uh, clear scanner binary. So I've given the get URL module and where is URL and destination. So I am uh, downloading it from this particular uh, URL and trying to copy to destination folder. Then I am trying to scan that uh, particular image, which I have uh, used in uh, variables, which is Debian SD in this case, SID. And I am trying to fire the command player scanner and the entire command. And then I'm trying to register, uh, register the scan output and trying to download the report locally and uh, basically use that particular uh, uh, output to show the actual result. On the right hand side, you can see uh, the result of the report. And you can see uh, the image that I have scanned is Debian SID. And uh, what are the unapproved CVs there is currently? And what are the vulnerability that uh, has the particular uh, container has. So that is how you can use uh, Clear, and actually it helps in static analysis uh, for your container, uh, like for your container. Now comes the schedule scan using Ansible automation platform for uh, Docker security. So basically, in case of continuous security practice. Uh, you'll have to do everything in a repetitive world, in a repetitive task sort of manner, where you are uh, planning, doing, studying, and acting at the same time, and you are doing it continuously. That's how you can achieve your continuous security practice. So, and by following standard checklists and benchmark, and using Ansible automation platform to execute them on the containers, we can actually achieve this, and we can check for security issues and act on them, basically. So the first one, uh, 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 as I talked about, was uh, Stackrocks, which is actually uh, which actually helps in continuous hardening and uh, uh, which helps in continuous hardening uh, automatically. So Stackrocks basically provides a security across the container lifecycle, and Stackrocks container security platform reduces the attack surface as well. It also ensures compliance and stop attacks. So and Stackrocks uh, leverages the benefit of Kubernetes native approach to security. And it's basically uh, works on three basic principles, which is richer context, where Stackrocks add context to container data using declarative data in Kubernetes. And it also increases the risk profiling, vulnerability management, runtime detection, and your overall visibility. And the second one is your native enforcement, which actually helps in policy enforcement. And here is Stackrocks leverages Kubernetes built-in controls. Uh, which actually help in minimizing the operational risk of using third party inline proxying or blocking solutions. And it also helps in continuous security uh, and continuous hardening, basically. So it actually uh, helps in continuously monitoring and minimizing the attack surface as Stackrock uses knowledge from runtime behavior to alter subsequent builds and deployments and uh, basically uh, the vice versa thing. So the Stackrocks focuses on Kubernetes helps uh, DevOps and security team operation, operationalize security, simplifying the process of protecting and cloud native application standards. Okay, uh, so Stackrocks exposes Kubelinter as a tool, which actually is a static analysis tool, and that checks Kubernetes YAML file and Helm charts to ensure the application represented in them adheres to the best practices. Uh, so it uh, analyzes Kubernetes YAML and checks them against a variety of best practices with a focus of uh, with a focus uh, on production readiness and basically security. So Kubernetes is configurable, okay? So if you want to enable and disable checks, uh, we can do that. Also, if we want to create your own, uh, if you want to come up with our own custom checks, we can do that because uh, from company to company and organization to organization, uh, rule might differ. Uh, so we can make a custom rule and apply in Kubelinter. And uh, Kubelinter also uh, uh, helps in uh, giving recommendation whenever there is a failure in the link check. Okay, 
So Anchor Engine is an open source project uh, which actually provides a centralized service of inspection, analysis, uh, and certification of container images. And Anchor Engine can be accessed directly through RESTful APIs or Anchor CLI. Uh, but in our case, uh, we will most prob uh, most probably go through a REST API. And the Anchor Engine is provided as a Docker data image that can be run standalone or within orchestration platforms. And how it helps uh, achieving uh, the system hardening or the container hardening is via policy evaluation operations, your image operation, image operation checks, your policy uh, operation checks, your registry operation checks, your subscription operation checks, and your system operation checks. Okay, so another tool uh, is Acosec QBench uh, for Center for, uh, Center for Internet Security Benchmark Scan. And QBench is a tool that checks whether Kubernetes is deployed securely by running the checks documented in the CIS uh, Kubernetes benchmark. And uh, basically, CIS is, a, a CIS is an organization which actually provides best practices for secure configuration of a target system. And it actually covers Plenty of uh, technology uh, of which Docker containers and Kubernetes uh, uh, is part of it. And it is developed through unique consensus uh, based approach, uh, which actually comprises of cybersecurity professional and subject matter experts around the world. And it also checks and verifies Kubernetes deploy as per Kubernetes best practices. So, uh, what are the advantages of Kubebench? Uh, it's an open source tool, it actually performs automated assessment. Uh, it checks and verifies for Kubernetes security best practices. Uh, it's installed directly or can be installed by a Docker container as well. Okay, so as I was talking about uh, Trivi uh, before, so Trivi is a simple and uh, very easy to use tool. And it's also a static uh, analysis tool. And Trivi actually detects volumity of OS packages, basically your container uh, OS packages like Alpha, and RHEL, CentOS, etc. And it also helps in uh, identifying the application dependencies. And Trivi is easy to use. And if we just install and uh, if you just install the Bambi, uh, we can just directly uh, consume it for scanning. And all we need to do for scanning is to specify a target uh, such as image name of the container base. So that's why it's one of the most used tool in the container security world. And uh, because uh, because of its uh, advantage, like open source, uh, it's an open source project. It's simple, it's fast, it, it can be easily installed. It actually helps in detecting comprehensive vulnerabilities. Uh, it has high accuracy, high accuracy, and it can easily be fitted in your DevSecOps pi pipeline. Uh, it actually supports multiple formats as well. Okay, uh, so now we'll discuss about schedule scan for file integrity uh, file integrity checks, and uh, this is basically host level monitoring using Ansible automation platform. And the main advantage of being able to execute command on the host using Ansible is the ability to get the internal system information like file hashes, your network connection details, your list of learning processes. So it can basically act as a lightweight host based intrusion detection system. Okay, so before uh, going to this, I want to show the working demo part of it. So let me stop presenting this and start presenting my command line okay so i hope everyone can see the screen let me increase the font a bit okay so i hope the font is clear now let me log into the device Okay, let me check the version of Ansible that I'm currently using. Okay, so this is, the environment is not set up for Ansible. Let me set that. So this basically sets up your Ansible environment. If you can see the version now. So the current version that I will be using is Ansible 11, 2.11.2. So I have my demo content under my demo folder. 
And the first one that I'll show is Docker Bench for security. Uh, so let me go through the Docker Bench playbook. Okay. So as you can see, this is the Docker Bench security playbook. And what I'm trying to do is first I'm uh, running on the local host. And I'm trying to elevate the privilege to admin level and I'm trying to gather facts. Uh, and at this point, the task that I'm trying to perform is making sure that Git is installed. And then I'm trying to do, uh, download the document security from the GitHub repo to a destination, to a local destination folder. And then I'm trying to run uh, the document security scan uh, and uh, from the directory. And then I'm downloading the report locally and trying to uh, report that result. So let me run this. Okay, so as you say, it gathered facts. Uh, it actually checked for uh, Git installation. And if, as is already present, it will not show any change. And the Docker Bench for security is also it's already downloaded. It will not change as, uh, it will not show as change. So the first, uh, it will try to run the Docker command scan, Docker Bench security command. And because of that, it is showing change as true. And then it's try to uh, download it, uh, it try to download the report locally and then it can be shown that, okay, at this uh, part, my reports has been downloaded. So let me show you guys the report. Okay, so this is how your Docker Bench security result might look like. And you can see uh, the first one is check result and it is checking based on host configuration. So this is the host configuration and these are the result uh, you can see, right? Warning, info, warning, info. And let's say if there is, let's see if there is any pass. Uh, yeah, okay, you can see that there is one pass. And, okay, sorry, for this is for Docker daemon configuration. And then for Docker, configura Docker daemon configuration files. So likewise, it will go ahead and scan for all the parameters that it's uh, supposed to scan like container runtime, Docker security operation, and Docker, your, uh, Docker song configuration. And other files like, so this again started for Docker daemon configuration. And another tool that I wanted to run with respect to uh, container security was Aquasec tree. So let me just open the Trivi playbook. So this is very basic playbook. As you can see, I'm currently trying, so first off, I have installed Trivi. And then I'm, and the task that I'm including is verify image using Trivi command. So uh, I can use Trivi directly with the image. And here I'm using Golang uh, uh, version one to real fine. And I'm trying to save the result in uh, JSON format. And then I'm trying to parse that JSON uh, file and trying to display the result. So if you can, now, if we we'll have the playbook, should give the output in ordered man. So it ran the image scan. Okay, so as you can see, it ran uh, the scan over Go Alpine to version one two or one one two, and. Uh, these are the dis, uh, volumetry that is currently found in this. So you can see the severity, right? Critical uh, severity as high, high. So based on your company requirement or your organization requirement, basically, we can choose to fix uh, the issues that is being identified by Trivi's scanner. So we can choose to identify uh, critical, all critical issues and try to resolve first. Based on the priority, we can decide on fixing high or medium or low priorities as well. You can see it has actually showed you all the results starting from high, medium, and low as well. So this was the uh, demo that I wanted to show you all. So let's get back to our presentation.
on uh, a start presenting my slide deck. Okay, so hope uh, everybody, wa everyone can see the slide deck again. So now this one is the most important part of our discussion, which is call for action. So basically, as we know, containers are rapidly changing the world of developers and operation teams, and everyone wants to make it as a part of uh, uh, the DevSecOps pipeline. And uh, it actually is accelerating uh, uh, in the world where security automation gets to play a front role, uh, front and your center role. So how you uh, you guys from the community can help us in achieving that particular uh, uh, security hardening and health in uh, achieving Ansible as a tool, a preferred tool for container security. You can help us in identifying uh, where you basically see Ansible as a better fit in container security world. Like you have a use case where you see that, okay, with this particular use case, Ansible can actually help in automating this particular use case, and this can the entire use case can be automated and uh, can be made part of uh, CI pipeline or DevSecOps pipeline. So we ourselves are trying to come up with the integration with all the providers uh, or the security vendors which are actually working in this space, container security and Kubernetes space. Well, out of those are Stackrox, Aqua Security, Anchor, Prisma Cloud, Wisplot, New Vectors, and more. Uh, so Ansible would love to partner with container security vendor if uh, there is an automation opportunity. So uh, uh, the first of uh, you, uh, you, many of you might already know that uh, Red Hat uh, uh, has, uh, and now Stackrock is part of basically Red Hat. So we are trying to come up with the first integration with uh, Stackrock. So uh, you can stay tuned for getting the integration uh, news. And with it, with this particular integration, we'll have a dedicated module for Saprox. And with those modules, it will have all the uh, documentation and everything like uh, Ansible module has. So you can uh, use those modules, ready-made modules, and you can automate that entire scenario what uh, Saprox exposes. So also, as I told you, you can help us in uh, coming up with the uh, use cases and the things that you want to uh, automate basically using Ansible. So to get in touch with us, you can join uh, the IRC channel, Libra channel, which is hashtag Ansible security. And you can also ping us on Ansible network as well. And uh, we have an Ansible security ebook, which is available. Uh, and uh, all of the demo source uh, resources that, uh, that I have just shown, all those contents are available and Ansible security demo content. It has other contents as well. And if you want to check it out, uh, uh, you can go ahead and play around with it and let us know what is it, what are you doing. So, okay, so this brings to the end of our discussion. Uh, and if you have a, at any point your, uh, if you have any question or queries uh, with regards to what I presented just now, you can ask now. Um, thank you again for joining this discussion.